Hey guys, this is the DataBits channel and you are watching a video about the Technicolor Video Recorder. This Technicolor Video Recorder is the CVC format. It's what it plays, is little tiny tapes. And the tapes are about the size of a cassette tape and I'll show you a comparison here in a moment. This is the lid of the unit and I have taken it apart. I found this unit on eBay. I've known about this format for years and just kind of ran my own little little search on eBay for one and uh, one popped up that it was a decent price. So I picked it up. Uh, this is the battery that goes in it. I've already cut the wire off of it and uh, I'll show you what I'm using for power currently. But uh, this is the unit with the lid removed and uh, it's a very simple made machine. Very efficient, well engineered. And, uh, but they are troublesome, problemsome. So if you do find one, you may have to do some work on it. So, so far when I received this unit, uh, I plugged it in and it did kind of what it's doing now, which was you hit play or you hit record or you hit rewind and watch what happens. So I'm going to hit, um, uh, I'll hit fast forward here. So the head starts spinning and it starts and then it just stops like nothing else happens here. I'll show you one more time. So this is fast forward here. Rewind doesn't even want to sit probably because the tape is already rewound, but so then it's uh, it's rewind, fast forward, stop, play and record. That's how the keys work. So if I hit play, same thing, it starts and then it stops and nothing else happens. So I had already taken the uh, chassis out, removed the, uh, this, this part right here, uh, removed the screws from the bottom, picked this part up, got underneath, replaced a couple belts because I did have it playing at one point. I was actually watching someone's home video on one of these little cassettes and then the unit quit. <clears throat> so it was kind of back to square one. I haven't been with you guys for a while because I've got allergies and uh, my voice has been wacky. So uh, that was why I tried to use a different voice on the last video, which turned out a little weird and wacky. But uh, here's a regular cassette tape. If I put it right there on it, this will give you a, an idea of the scale and size of this machine. I mean, there were machines made in the 70s of uh, stereo cassette players that weren't, uh, that were bigger than this, you know? And uh, this is the CVC format. So here, let's, uh, let's eject the tape and I'll show you what the tape looks like. So at first I thought, well, the reason this thing won't rewind or fast forward is because the tape is old and it's jammed up and such. And I even took one of these tapes apart and on the inside, uh, just like a cassette tape, it has those, uh, slider type, uh, uh, sheaths or it's, it's, it's like a sheet actually. And there's two of them sandwiched on top and bottom of the tape. And, uh, I tried to replace them with ones from a cassette and that also didn't fix it. So. Uh, just to kind of peer around and see what's inside of this thing. So uh, lots of capacitors, um, haven't replaced any of those at this point. So this is your video processing and all that kind of stuff. There's an interesting little board right here. I don't know what it does, but it looks cool sitting there. And then uh, the loading mechanism is, is very similar to, uh, well, it's kind of a cross between VHS and beta as far as the way it loads. It does load from both sides. So these uh, things are inside the tape and it pulls the tape out to, uh, to a point here at the end, actually. So instead of rounding it around, it actually goes around both ways there. Uh, there are two motors in it, the motor that spins the head right here. And then this drive motor here pretty much runs everything else. It runs the loading mechanism. It uh, drives the capstan, which is right underneath here. Uh, it does it all. So uh, we got a tape counter that still works. Um, as far as the power supply goes, this is the connector for the battery, which, uh, like I said earlier, I removed it from the battery and I have it wired to this 12 volt power supply that I purchased online. It puts out uh, 12 volts and, uh, I guess all those different amps, depending upon the, the draw of the unit you're using up to four amps. So uh, this unit did not come with its uh, power supply. I didn't get that. The power supply connects over here on the side, right there where it says power. 
but also right there that same jack that din connector also outputs the video and the audio and then you have a camera connector right next to it there in the middle and that camera connector actually uh is the input for a tuner which was a, an option that you could get with this thing then you got a sound dub you've got um, mic and headphone jack there earphone i guess uh, you got a still here and a track now what's interesting is you can put it in still mode like that and then use this track button here and it will actually speed up and slow down the tape while you're playing it so it almost looks like a jog shuttle control it works a lot like that so um, after doing a little uh, prayer and meditation and and looking at this thing I kind of came to the realization that the reason the rest of the mechanism isn't working is because there are these two transistors in here I'm gonna see if I can get one of there's one of them okay so it's right in the middle of your screen it's got a screw on top of it so that's one of the transistors and you say, how did you know it was that transistor? Well, I actually took a, a, a flathead screwdriver and put it across the, the, two, um, the two pins on this side and uh, the loading mechanism took off, the threading mechanism. So uh, thanks to uh, Gateway Electronics here in St. Louis, I was able to pick up the replacement transistors. And I'm trying to show you the second one. You can see it down in there. It also has a screw on top of it. So, um, basically took a picture of them and took them into Gateway Electronics and they told me that these are the replacements for it so one starts with an A and that's the replacement part for it and the other one starts with a C and that's the replacement uh, transistor for that one now it's interesting because it says audio amp driver on these and I asked the guy that works there I said you know I don't think that these are audio amplifiers and he said oh no these are just general uh, these are just general transistors you know uh, here's a close-up of it and uh, I said oh okay and he said yeah it's probably the the voltage uh, speed regulator for the drive motor and I said oh well that makes perfect sense because this motor right here is the one that isn't taking off when I hit play so when I hit play here I'm just getting the motor for the video head and then this one is not taking off okay so it's supposed to start spinning and drive this all up in there when i took it apart and i replaced the belts i also disconnected a spring and i'm hoping that this is where it goes i kind of had to guess but you can see it on the edge of this motor right here see that spring right there so when i pulled all that mechanism out on the bottom it's a series of gears uh, connected by a, a shaft so you have to take a little c-clip off remove all that little gear mechanism and then you can see see that gold rod that's sticking up there that 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 springs attached to that's coming from the bottom of the unit and a series of gears is what runs the uh, threading mechanism for the VCR and gets the tape into play and then um, but I'm pretty sure that's where that spring goes it just made sense that it went there and I didn't notice it before I pulled all that stuff out so um, anyway so I had it rewinding it was working fine it had plenty of torque uh, once I took it apart and then uh, when I put it back together it wouldn't play anymore and I'm like ah and that's one of the risks that you take when you work on these old electronics sorry about the lighting issue there uh, when you work on these old electronics they uh, you work on one thing and try to fix something else and they're so old and fragile uh, because of their age I mean this thing's from 1980 um, and so you know it's been around a long time it's probably been sitting in storage forever and uh, you start working on one thing and something else tries to break which is just you know it's disappointing so what's the next step the next step is to replace those two transistors like I mentioned earlier uh, you can see one of them there once again so I'm gonna replace those with these and we will see if it works better as a result okay so that's what we'll talk about and show you in our next segment. So if everything works like it's supposed to, we'll have something cool to show you. And then I can show you the footage that's on one of the tapes that I acquired over the years for this. In fact, there's another video I made where I talked about rare formats and um, uh, I showed one of those CVC tapes in that video. So hopefully I'll get to be able to play that for you. All right, here we go.
Before we get into the transistor replacement, I thought we'd take a little side road here. Take the motherboard off of the chassis here and let you kind of see what's going on underneath here. I mean, it's like Tron underneath here. I mean, there's like a, a network, a city of, of uh, circuitry in here. Um, just thought I'd show it to you. There's the, uh, the chassis there. It's been separated from the motherboard, the main circuit board there. And you can see all the pulleys and belts. And uh, this, this is the gear assembly that I mentioned earlier and the little shaft that it all fits on. And you remove the C-clip right here and this entire assembly comes off of there. So uh, it's very fascinating the way it's uh, built. Uh, this is the motor for the video head right here on the underside. And this is your uh, flywheel for the capstan and the belt associated with it. So very interestingly made and um, I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you all of the inside. Okay, the soldering work is done. Let's go in and see how I did. You can see the soldering points for the two transistors. Here is, let me get my pointer here. So here's the first one. This is where the left one went. So those three terminals there. And then the second one was these three terminals here. And let's go ahead and move the camera around the top of the board here and see if we can peer down in there at them. There they are. So um, you can see I've got the little plastic rings on the underside of both of them. And it was very tricky to get that screw in there, at least on the right one, because those wires were hanging out out there. So I thought, hey, I'm going to use solder as my, uh, as my tool. So basically I just created a hook on the end of the soldering thing here, just basically turned it around like this and put the screw in the loop and then lowered the screw down into that uh, area down there and got it into place where it needed to be. So it worked out good. All right, so solder, here's the solder I'm using. Good old Radio Shack solder standard rosin core sorry for the shaky camera and then uh, we don't talk about my soldering iron that much but i wanted to mention it to you here this is a weller soldering iron that i'm using and it's a wps here let's flip it over so we can see it it is a wps something or other five one no wps 18 mp okay there we go so that's the official soldering iron of the DataBits channel. I love the soldering iron. It has a replaceable tip. It just kind of comes out of there. It's got a, uh, a little LED light to illuminate what you're soldering. And when it's hot, it goes from red to green and it gets hot really quick. Now the thing is, you got to work really hard to keep your soldering tip clean. And uh, if it ever gets to a point where it's not getting hot enough, uh, then you need to have your uh, I use just a paper towel, a wet paper towel, use that, or you can use a sponge. Works very well, but keep your tip clean. If your tip gets dirty, then just use some, um, some sandpaper like I've got here and just clean the, the tip of it off. Okay. Get it looking silver again. All right. So here's our perpetrators here. These two alien life forms known as transistors. So, uh, yeah, remember there was one that started with a C and one that started with an A and there they are removed from this crazy VCR. So together we shall see if what we just did was the cure for what ails us. And we will see this happening live here together. Well, it was live when I taped it. I'm going to go ahead and plug my 12 volt power supply in with one hand as I use my other hand to hold the camera. That's right. I have talent. All right. So let's see if we can, uh, let's get some light going on here. That's decent. Let's see if I can kill that. Does that look better? That looks a little better. All right. Let's see if we can do rewind. No rewind. No fast forward. And no play. All right, guys, it worked great. All right, I am confident that uh, what we just did fixed it perfectly. And I am very excited that it did the job. All right, I guess it didn't do the job. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, back to square one. Either that or there may be something out of sync here or something. But uh, 
All right, I gotta see if I can figure out what's going on. Well, after spending several million hours trying to get this thing working, uh, I've managed to fiddle with it to the point where I can get it to work, although it doesn't work great. I honestly don't know what's going on with the thing, um, other than the fact that it may be poorly made. So let me see if I can get some stuff going here. I'm gonna hit play, and so you can see it thread. So there's what the thread looks like. And yep, and then it stops. Just to give you an idea how the tape threads, you can see that it's coming out of the tape both on the left of your screen and the right. And as I move the camera back, you can see where it connects with the uh, audio head there on that. And there's the capstan and the pin roller in the middle of your screen and some guides there guiding the tape back. This machine is getting worse and worse the more I mess with it. Um, of course, the transistors, uh, I replaced those and then I narrowed it down to this uh, capacitor here that was kind of uh, also a gateway to getting the thing working. And then I took that spring off down inside of here and the thing is just having a seizure right now. You can see that little thing moving down inside of there it really just doesn't know what to do with itself but uh, this will pretty much conclude this video unfortunately I was not able to get it to work and function properly um, never seen such issues with uh, an older VCR most VCRs just a couple of belts and rollers and you are ready to go this one unfortunately after some belts and rollers uh, well no rollers in this case but uh, after some belts, it, the thing just falls apart. I mean, it's just poorly made, cheaply made, and uh, nicely engineered, just as I said at the beginning of the video. I like the way it's made, and it's made very simple, but that simplicity may have gotten them in a little bit of trouble, and um, it just simply will not cooperate. Uh, a lot of the issues I seem to be having, uh, or like a lot of the success that I had, was definitely in this area. I replaced that capacitor. You can see it sitting there on the side. The original was also sitting there on the side. But uh, there's a, a hundred uh, microfarad capacitor that goes there and uh, replacing it with a different one did not help. Well, anyway, fascinating technology. And uh, again, sorry we didn't get it all the way to functioning, but uh, that will do it for this video. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this video. And uh, if I have any updates, if I manage to get this thing working, I can show you uh, Adventures on Route 66 here, which is a video that a couple guys made back in the uh, 1980s, of course, early 1980s. And they're driving like a 79 yellow Corvette or something in the video. So now, if I can only get this video to unwind in here, de-thread and go back into the cartridge, I'll have a chance to play that on a future uh, video machine of the same type. Again, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share this with a friend, and excuse me while I go and uh, throw this off a cliff. Thank you.